The David L. McCoy building was opened with much fanfare in June of 2021 with the promise of an immediate return on the $8.2 million investment. We will already achieve immediate returns. But immediate has gone to indefinite. More than a year later, the building is still not really opened and in fact is going through a massive and costly retrofitting. The building was still not finished. It was supposed to have been finished, supposed to have been finished already. And when we were trying to get answers as to why it hasn't been finished yet, we found that there were many delays and many things that are not up to standard. So. And it all starts with that gleaming glass facade that you see on the outside. Today it looks very different once you get inside. That's because large sections of it are covered with drywall. Why? Because of the heat, extreme heat felt inside. As it turns out, while living in a glass house may look fancy and modern, working in one in the tropics can be like a sweat box. The problem has a lot to do with the orientation of the building. It faces east-west, meaning that in the afternoon and evening, the sun's rays are hitting all those glass panels directly, heating up the inside. It's almost like a heat conductor. And then that brings us to the next problem, which is the quality of the glass. It's too thin and lets in too much light. And that's where the trouble started. When the first tenant commenced complaining about the unbearable heat in the office, that's when Social Security knew it had a problem. They just didn't know how big a problem it would turn out to be. Today, $3 million of workers' money later, they are still trying to recover. When we did the opening of this building, it was told to us the cost was $8.2 million. Mm -hmm. What is that cost at now? Uh, with the additional um, works that are going, we are talking $11.1 million at the end of the day. But it starts with the windows. And when it comes to those, truth can be a moving target. The architect, Louis Ruiz, said he consulted with specialists at Benny's to get solar reflective, double glazed windows laminated to withstand strong winds. The contractor, Daniel Fabro, says that the contract he got clearly had specifications for clear glass. In this letter to Social Security, he writes that he changed the glass to tinted solar reflective low e-glass to make it more energy efficient. Fabra told us the design specifications had many conflicts, glass being one, and insists that the actual plans do call for clear glass. But no matter the glass, with the building situated to face the sun from morning straight through to evening, even much more expensive argon-filled glass would likely not have kept it cool. The sheetrock solution has turned what would have been magnificent floor-to-ceiling views into just portals to the outside world. But that was just the start of the troubles with the building. In response to a Freedom of Information request, Social Security CEO Deborah Ruiz wrote to tell us, quote, because of growing concerns during the defects liability period, the board contracted the services of New Buildings Limited to do a complete assessment of the building. We have international clients in our building. We have to assure um, in writing some of the um, constraints that we have in terms of uh, um, protection against earthquakes, protection against um, high winds, hurricane winds. Uh, we're looking at enhancing um, bathroom facilities for some of the areas and strengthening the, the entire um, frame in terms of the stability of the building to make sure that we can guarantee to our clients their safety in terms of the, the winds, um, sustained winds and hurricane. And here's the engineer's review obtained via Freedom of Information request. It is peer reviewed by two engineers, William Lam and Carlton Young. Running a simulation for Category 1 winds, they found multiple column failure with even 115 mile an hour winds. The conclusion was grim. The results showed that the building as is would not resist a storm as per design codes. And this was their solution, a frame, something like a spine, built onto the back of the building to give it what the engineers call lateral stability in the event of a storm or hurricane. That's how it looks on paper, and this is how it looks on the ground, like some strange add-on. Inside, large cross members are hidden underneath new drywall sheets, a Frankenstein creation, if ever there was one. 